Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toasty Bros. And today we are building a $250 gaming PC. And this is probably the cheapest 6400 XT PC you're gonna find. We love the RX 6400 XT because it's a low profile car that you can buy new in stock and slap it into something like an Optiplex. And I swear, this is gonna be the last Optiplex for a little bit. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Thermaltake and their new Tower 500 Mid Tower case with a unique tower design to set your build out from the crowd. So Support for EATX and really any ATX motherboard with plenty of room for expansion, three beautiful temper glass side panels to show off your creation, and support for a 360 mil radiator and ample airflow for your next high performance gaming PC build. If you're looking for a no compromise unique PC case, then look no further than the Tower 500 from Thermaltake. Thanks to Thermaltake for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into it, shall we? So if you guys want to see like a higher end version of this, we actually did one with a Fortune i7 system and that worked really well. We were pretty hyped, pretty proud of it, but now we're going pretty, pretty low end. We're basically going with an i5-3470 and we don't really know how well it's going to work, but there's only one way to find out. So what we're going to do is show you guys how to put this together. Optiplexes are very easy to work with, especially adding a low profile card. So we're going to go over that 6400 XT and the also very essential upgrade we recommend for this and uh, how we put it together for 250 bucks. So let's just go over that stuff. So what's this? Optiplex. This is a 7010. So the good thing about the 7010, one of the reasons why we probably went with this one is because it actually has a Gen 3 PCIe slot. So this little blue lane right here, it's not going to look any different if it's Gen 2. So you can't really just look at it and go, oh, that's Gen 2, that's Gen 3. But long story short, the 7010s, 9010s, 9020s, basically anything that starts with a seven or a nine that's past second gen should have a PCIe Gen 3 slot. We found that when we put this into a Gen 2 slot, we do lose quite a bit of performance. So Gen 3 actually works pretty well, especially in that one i7 system. We are very, very impressed with it. So yeah, let's go ahead and just do some upgrading on this because it's pretty easy. We actually do these a lot. I mean, we buy these by the pallet sometimes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the thermal paste. I don't know if Matt expected that, but that's what I'm going to do it. He wants it to be clean. We got to make sure it's perfect. Oh yeah. And now normally we'd go through and dust all this out too. We have air compressors, you know, we don't waste that canned air. It's not, not worth our time. So normally we'd go through, we'd blow this out. So basically what we're doing, this is a small form factor. We got some stuff to take out. So we're just going to pop this little hard drive cage out. Boop, just like that. Look at that little dust bowl. Woo, that's yummy. Pretty gross, that's it? a snack. Yeah, no, it really is. So I can tell that we have, let's see what we got for RAM. I think two eight gigs or two four gig sticks. Yep, should be eight gigs. Yep, two different brands. We got SK Hynix and Samsung, two good brands. Hopefully they work out well together. I think they will. But if you notice the one, two, three, four, we're basically just gonna go in like reverse order. You just wanna do opposing corners basically. You don't wanna do like everything at once because that's how you end up like cracking a CPU die or something along those lines. So I'm gonna do a little bit here, a little bit there. And so this part's a little bit weird because sometimes the coolers are like stuck on there because a lot of people do not redo the thermal paste. I think we're gonna have to take off this little security alarm here. We'll... Whoop, 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 whoop. So nor normally we just get rid of these side panel alarms because they can cause issues, but we'll just leave it on for now. So we got a little bit of dust here. We'll definitely blow that off. Um, yeah, thermal paste is old. If you see how it just looks like there's no, I mean, it doesn't even look like paste. It looks like it's just painted on there. That's definitely not good. You wanna have like a nice, like movable consistency. And I mean, if you look, and it barely even came off my finger. Good thermal paste will come right off. So let's verify our CPU real quick. Matt, what do you see? Uh, I found 3470. That's it, that's what we're supposed to have, let's go. So now we're just taking a rubbing alcohol pad and just getting in here real good. We wanna get that old stuff off so that we don't have major void areas. Cause that's the whole point of thermal paste is to kind of bridge those, those gaps where you'd have air between the metal. Cause that doesn't conduct heat very well. But like I said, we'll definitely blow this out um, a little bit later here. Not something I really feel like doing right now. Let's get this piece back over top here. We don't want to put this under the cooler. You definitely want to make sure you don't get any cords under the cooler. We've been that once or twice. But let's just say it doesn't cool very well. So now we're just going to line up those screws. Boom. And so now we're going to go in the order. It says one, one two, three two and so i usually just do a little bit on each like maybe about halfway for each one and then we'll crank them all all the way down the nice part about these is you can't really over tighten them i mean you could if you really crank down but for the most part you just tighten it till it stops and it has springs on it to really help it make good contact and then we should be good to go ahead and get all this back in because we want to make sure our card's going to fit properly that is the one downside with these Optiplexes. Um, actually, we should probably put in the SSD. SSD real quick. Yeah. I'll do the SSD and then I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Mittens. Oh, the graphics man. card. I'm going to let you do the graphics oh card, my little God. guy. But you can't break this off. I'm going to break it. it. It always comes broken I'm for gonna some break reason. It. So, for the SSD, guys, we're doing a 512 gig. And uh, I kind of sidetracked myself because this is the hard drive caddy. It actually didn't come with the caddy 
Funny, and, oh no, it did, it's right here. Yeah, it's right there. We're good to go. Sometimes they don't come with the caddy, which I don't think we're gonna be able to, it yeah, we can't really use this technically, yeah. so. Yeah, no, this one's a little bit too old. Sometimes they had a spot down here, so what we'll probably do, I'm gonna leave this in here because a customer might want it. I think we might go double-sided adhesive. Sticky, sticky. Might go double-sided adhesive. I can grab that, I know where that Some is. sticky icky? It's right here. This is the overkill sticky, but you know what, it's good. So, I mean, we have a few different ways we could do this. We could literally stick it anywhere. I'm actually gonna put it on the caddy to just be legit, so. Make we'll it look like it. it's legit. Yeah, we'll do it like, just like that. If you ever need good adhesive, very high bond 3M VHB. Fill it like, like down below. Yeah, <laughs> this is what they use on cars and stuff like that for like trim and um, decals and stuff. And it doesn't lose its grip. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and plug in our SSD. But yeah, look how good that adhesive is. I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere. Plug in our hard drive here. Or sorry, SSD, this is our power cable. And now if you guys ever wanted to add like a nicer card, um, with these ones, you really can. I mean, the best you can do is a low profile card. But if you had a bigger system like an MT, which is the full size ones, you don't have to get one of these new low profile cards that cost more. You could always get yourself a full size, like let's say 1050 Ti or 1060 and use external power and they'll have extra SATA. You just buy a little adapter and then you can put a six pin on there and you can actually have like a decent graphics card. I had a guy come into PC Res the other day that was running a Optiplex with that had a six Gen i5 and an RTX 2060 in it. Wow, he's wild. Yeah, I know, I was like, that's, that's an interesting build. There we go. So now this just slides back in like that and everything is plugged in we're looking pretty good now you have very limited room on this so matt um shouldn't have any issues because this card's really small but some of those 1050 ti's and stuff are like pretty decent sized double lane so we'll cover this other pci and be a little bit tight all right guys look at this cute card this is literally the smallest graphics card box i've ever seen but that's because the rx 6400 xc is a single slot card and but it's uh, small but mighty. and we're, we're going to take it out right here look at this very cute packaging and See, i believe size doesn't matter i believe uh do, is that the low profile one do i have to install low profile one I think I just saw a low profile bracket, but we'll get to that. Uh, but look at this thing. It's adorable. It's cute. It has a little fan right. Oh wait, the fan blades are protected. That's kind of cool. That's yeah, good for that these is, opties because uh, yeah. there's a lot of cables going around, but I'm going to try Crazy. to take this peel off because there's a lot of peel. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take off. I believe that's, yeah, this is the part where that has the actual bracket. So just get a screwdriver right here. And we're gonna go right her, and we're gonna go lefty left. <laughs> lefty lefties. Lefty lefties. And I believe that's not the only one. one. There's one more that's underneath this. Oh, and then you're gonna have these tiny ones right oh, here. Oh, Lordy. Wow. So you gotta take this whole cooler off. That's not ideal. What? Especially for a card that's a single slot. Most people are gonna be using it low profile, not full size. So. Do we swap out the thermal paste? <laughs> swap out the thermal paste? <laughs> I would prefer that they actually just came with the low profile and gave you the full size to swap to. But... I've actually never seen. Like I've never- And you have to avoid- Dude, your, you have to avoid the warranty? You have to avoid your warranty to put the bracket on. That's kind of messed up. I'm not gonna lie, XFX, this is uh, not the smartest move. I mean, good, good card, good card, but not a, not a good move. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Disagree that. Disagree with it. So look at that little GPU. Aww. It's so cute. Yeah, I mean, I guess on the bright side, it's very basic. Like, I mean, it that cooler is. will just pop right back on with the screws. But it, it is very, I, I disagree 100% with that whole warranty sticker. That's, yes. that's very disagreeable. All right, we're gonna get these screws. So we take that off. We're gonna put the other one on and screw it in. Okay. And look at that. Those screws just line right up again. Imagine that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and install these other screws back. Or get a screwdriver that's actually magnetic. Put this back on, try not to disturb the beautiful manufacturing that XFX did with this little guy. All righty. That bracket part. Unnecessary in my opinion, but you know what? XFX, you do you. So now we're gonna install it with the proper bracket installed. So all we gotta do is pull this bad boy up right here. Boop. And all we need to do is take out one of these. Look at that, slid out nice. And we're going in that blue slot. This is definitely like, I would say probably the strongest single lane card out in the market right now. It definitely is. There's I don't think you could get a 1050 or 1050 Ti. Single. I don't believe so. There was like a 1050 or something that was very particular. I think there was like one single lane version, but it was not like very readily available. Right. All right, so it's in there. And will this go down? That's a GPU install, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the SSD installed. Now, one thing you do have to do is install Windows. We're gonna install Windows 10 just to avoid any issues because technically you could get Windows 11 working on this, but I'm not going to do that because it is has issues with like Valorant and games like that if you want to play. So Windows 10 installed, ready to go, and uh, we're just going to dive into some benchmarks. All right, guys, now that we have this Optiplex, this $250 Optiplex all booted up and ready to go, let's take you down this rabbit hole that was this benchmarking run because we had to make a change, but I'll explain later. First up, with the original configuration, which was the i5-3470 inside the 7010 Optiplex with the RX 6400, uh, we dove into Fortnite on DX12 low settings and we had a stutter mess, mainly being we only averaged about 60 to 70 FPS. The frame times were really bad 
and it just lagged all over the place. Now, the reason I did DX12 at first was because a lot of people were recommending DX12 for AMD graphics cards because AMD GPUs had just been struggling in Fortnite recently. So I did that and the performance wasn't great. I, it looked like it was a massive CPU bottleneck, which I really wasn't expecting. Yes, it's an older i5, just a quad core, but every time I've tested Fortnite, it never ends up being this big a bottleneck. So I went to performance mode and did the exact same thing and we were getting higher frame rates, but the stutter was immense. It was awful and I didn't get better performance until I locked it to 60 FPS and even then I was still getting stutters and dips below 60. This is where I started to get a little bit concerned that this Optiplex configuration just wasn't going to work and maybe that PCI slot was actually a Gen 2 slot um, and a Gen 2 slot with the RX 6400 being a buy 4 card. It is a Gen 4 buy 4 card when it's running at any other PCI like generation 3 or 2 it's going to be running at buy 4 speed so it's going to be significantly slower um, at minimum we need a Gen 3. Gen 3 is not amazing but we have noticed from our testing that the RX 6400 isn't that high enough of a card to begin with so going with a Gen 3 by 4 isn't that bad but when it's running Gen 2 it's going to have a lot of problems so maybe we were wrong with our research and the 7010 is actually a buy 2 but we continued the testing 1080p low for Apex Legends and we did a stuttery mess once again it was just the exact same thing where we launched into the game and it was just ridiculously laggy it it was not a good experience after everything settled out we were getting about a 60 ish FPS experience but it was not playable it really was not playable at all um, and then we decided to play Elden Ring a new game we had to the benchmark rotation great time for that right tended to be low setting as you can see me running around acting like I have no idea what to do in the game because honestly I have no idea what to do in the game guys um, we got an average of about 40 to 50 FPS but we were dipping down to 30 um, this just seemed somewhat normal because Elden Ring is kind of a harder game to run and the max FPS is 60 FPS so um, I kind of just took that with a grain of salt but after that I wanted to figure out if I was just going crazy and this is like the worst configuration ever and you also just avoid this or there was something wrong with the system so we grabbed another Optiplex which after doing some research the Optiplex 7020 with a 4th gen i5 a 4590 goes on eBay sometimes with like RAM and SSDs for maybe like $10 more, $10, $20 more. Um, and that's basically free performance. That $10 seems to be, well, well worth it. And as you can see from the benchmarks, after swapping everything to that other Optiplex, we got massive performance gains. In Fortnite on performance mode, we were getting 100 plus FPS, very low frame times, no dips. Um, it was so much smoother. It was crazy how big of a difference there was. And I don't know if there was just something physically wrong with the Optiplex we had, the 7010. You all can let me know down below. But I do think it is the Gen 2 slot. That, there actually is one. And we thought it was Gen 3, but it's Gen 2. Um, and we were kind of wrong about that. Um, another game we tried to test with the first Optiplex, but just literally would not launch, is Call of Duty Warzone. Normally, you don't hear the word Call of Duty Warzone and Optiplex in the same sentence, but we're actually able to launch Warzone on low settings 1080p albeit we are playing rebirth because there's people in my comments who have said we mainly play rebirth we don't play the main game and it's easier to run so we decided to run rebirth and we got 70 to 80 fps so i'd imagine in the main game you get about 60 with a few dips here and there it would not be the most playable experience but if you drop down to like 1600 by 900 in the main game you'd probably get a 60 fps experience but it can run warzone a 250 dollars pc well probably more realistically a $260 PC at this point uh, could run Warzone which is pretty impressive. Now we went back into Elden Ring and we didn't notice much of a difference. We got like 30 to 40 FPS. I think this game really needs more threads. Just a quad core and an older quad core that is with an i5 4590 can't keep up in Elden Ring. So again this is a AAA title that's pretty demanding to run. So getting a somewhat playable experience is not too shabby. You could drop the resolution down as well if you absolutely wanted to play Elden Ring ring but yeah 30 to 40 fps is what we ended up with and then apex legends had the biggest jump in performance from 1080p low on the first opti getting like 60 fps with a ton of stutters we bumped all the way up to 100 plus fps in an arenas mode so yeah, I would highly, highly, highly suggest picking up one with an i5-4590. Everything we did in the video in terms of showing you how to change the thermal pace, install the SSD, install the graphics card is going to be pretty much identical.
vertical. Um, only thing is the cooler might be different on the Optiplex. It's not using that like blower style cooler design on the CPU. Um, but it overall is a pretty simple process. So if you can pick up a Ford Gen 1, which is what I'm gonna link down below, will be a filling link and will help us out, you will have much better performance, something like an RX 6400 compared to the 7010 with a second or third gen i5 CPU. And if you can get an i7 CPU like the 4770 or something like that, that we were able to do with another Optiplex or the 4790, you can get even more performance. But I guess the recap that we never planned on having with this video was to just stay away from second or third gen Optiplexes if you're gonna be using any of these gen four cards like the 6400. So yeah, let me know down below what you think of these results. It's kind of turned into a gen two versus gen three battle. Um, and I think getting a gen three system is very, very important. Uh, now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how would I bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick? All right, guys, so as you saw from the benchmarks, uh, we ended up swapping some things. So we went from this third gen system, yes, yeah, the third gen one with the 7010 to the 7020 system with the four gen i5 because we do believe this thing was running in gen three because we just had a lot of problems with it. And we were like, you know what, just for the sake of testing, we don't wanna release a build that is just totally messed up when you could get something with a four gen processor and pay roughly the exact same price, if a little bit more and get way more performance. And as you saw from the benchmark run, we got a lot more performance even though the play warzone on a pc that's probably about like 250 260 bucks still so in terms of buying the system definitely go fort gen if you're going to rock a 6400 these are still good for some lower end systems or cars that don't require that you know buy for like adaptation and something like a 6050 or something like that but because of limitations with the 6400 this is definitely a better buy and makes it for a good 250 dollars pc now also we weren't originally going to do this, but since we had to like swap systems and this video is just getting really interesting now, we have an upcoming video where we're actually going to basically talk about what it's like owning a PC selling business, all the ups and all of the downs. So real quick, I wanted to go over the actual cost of this PC because we sell this exact system, the fourth gen i5 with the 6400 at PCBros.tech and it's 425 bucks for free shipping. That sounds pretty bad, right? Because we just said you can do this for like 250. Well, going over the price breakdown, I got my handy sheet of paper here. First, we buy the Dell Optiplex 7020 with an i5-4590, 8 gigs of RAM and no storage. You're looking at $80 to $110, and that's on eBay, of course. You might better find really good deals locally. Then you buy an RX 6400 4 gig. You're looking at about 160 new because we only use those new cards, and you need to add a 512 gig to an half inch SSD. You're looking at around 40 bucks. So that's just the cost of the actual parts themselves. Now we got some labor involved. We got to clean the systems like you saw us do in the video. We got to apply new thermal paste, and we have to install the parts, the SSD and the graphics card. That's 10 to 15 bucks right there, give or take. Activate Windows 10, install and update 1620 right there. We gotta pack it in a box. We gotta pack it really well with shipping materials, seven to $10 worth of materials. Shipping and insurance, 15 to $30, because we do free shipping on these computers. So the total before the 6% tax is $328, after tax 347. And if you decide to swipe that little credit card to use the debit card online, obviously, that's a 2.6% plus 30 cent credit card processing fee. This sounds so businessy, but that comes up to $357 and two cents. Now, the price can really vary because obviously we're telling you you can do it for 250. That's minus labor and that's minus activating windows. It's minus taxes and stuff like that. So obviously if you do deal hunting, you could probably do this for less than 250. I mean, some people get these systems for free, which they let us know all the time, but obviously we're buying the systems in bulk and we can't always get the best pricing. So that is our basic price breakdown. We're lucky if we make around 50 to $75 profit on these builds. So we really do appreciate anybody who has ordered from us. So yeah, if you don't want to go through the headache of deal hunting or doing anything, that's why PC Bros exists. I mean, we're obviously gonna tell you if you build it yourself or hunt yourself, you're gonna save money, but if you just don't wanna do that or don't have the know how to do that, and you wanna have a one year warranty, which these things definitely don't come with through eBay, <laughs> you can buy one over at PCBros.tech. So as always, we do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you wanna buy any of the parts used in this video, check the links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links, so it will help us out. So hey, if you don't buy from PC Bros, you can also just buy using the affiliate links and do it yourself, and that really helps us. But also check out our other two YouTube channels and also our Twitch TV slash Toasty Bros and do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So this is the end card and we're talking to McAllister. He's behind the camera right now. And I feel like he needs a better computer. He has like, what, an 8th Gen i5 with the GTX 1080, but why do that when you can have an OptiPlex? Where, where should you buy McAllister? Come here, come tell, uh, the, come tell the people. I come think here. the answer right, is right truly, that. you should be buying at pcbros.tech. And you can go ahead and check for Toast Bros 2 for 2% off on everything there. Wow, it's like he edits our videos code or right. something. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, see what you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.